to hear my ramblings on the leadership of the Embodiment Conference. My name is Mark Walsh, I'm the founder of the Embodiment Conference. Most of you know, uh, I think at time of recording, 300,000 people have signed up. We might get double that in the end. Um, we have a thousand presenters and about 50 members of staff. So it's a relatively, um, well, it's world record breaking size in some ways, though in other ways, as I was saying, it's like a small company, you know, 50 people. Um, so it's been an interesting leadership challenge for me and it's definitely made me grow a lot as a person. Um, the embodiment training I have myself has definitely helped. There's a whole field of embodied leadership that I've taught for years and I'm very glad I've got that. You know, just basic skills like centering, having one's own uh, embodied practice, being able to be aware of stress and manage that. I mean, considering I'm a million pounds in right now, I'm not under a huge amount of stress and that is a choice and that is a practice. There are days that are good and bad for sure. Sometimes this expectation that if you do embodiment or yoga or meditation, you're supposed to be like perfect the whole time. So I, I reject that. Uh, but it is interesting. Some people use that like as a hammer to tick you with if you're kind of like less than perfect 100% of the time. I would say on the whole though, uh, it's definitely helped having embodied training for one's own self-regulation, for one's own leadership, for being able to tune into purpose. So it's coming from purpose and passion. Uh, last night we did a piece on humour, which is another embodied quality, being able to lighten up around things. Um, yeah, these are, you know, some of the challenges for me is when I'm stressed, like listening deeply, which is such a key leadership skill. And I'm, if I'm honest, not my strength. Um, so that's a key leadership challenge for me knowing where to keep one's focus and being a direct it, the meditation practice really helps. The other thing that's interesting about leadership in a conscious or alternative kind of environment is that a lot of uh, my tribe, my people, are hypersensitive to perceived tyranny. It's called hypervigilance in trauma work. So they can be allergic to any kind of leadership, which is really a problem in that, you know, I'm a leader, that's just how it is. Um, you know, I own the organization, I am the head of, you know, we vote on things, there's democratic processes and listening, but at the end of the day, I'm the boss. And that can be a tricky thing for some of the people I work with. I think, you know, I get this, I'm from an Irish family, I get that authority shadow and that pushback, and sometimes I find it immature. I find it one of the less useful things in our community. Any kind of leadership is perceived or as perceived as tyranny or this sort of hyper vigilance to it potentially being tyranny. Anyone who's successful is a bad person is sometimes the narrative um, in alternative communities. And I get why, and I, sometimes I just wish, okay, we need to move on from this, guys. It's time to grow up. It can make leading a bit of a pain in the ass, actually. This is, I see this in the left as well. Like most of my friends are sort of liberal on the left, and there's the way in which those communities, whether they're alternative, ecological, leftist, whatever, they, they eat themselves alive. They tend to eat their own leaders, uh, which I think is a real problem. Um, and you need to be able to let people lead. So I think a vigilance against tyranny is a good thing, but a hypervigilance, maybe not. So that's something I've seen. Uh, a key one as a leader for me, uh, looking after myself, then my people, then the project, in that order. Okay, so it's not selfish to look after oneself. I spend about three hours a day exercising, meditating, and getting coached or in therapy. Maybe an hour a day plus that in nature. So it's maybe four hours a day just to stay um, somewhere near optimal, or at least in relatively optimal. So um, yeah, that is the beginning. And then taking care of the people and the relationships and only then looking at the marketing and the computer systems and you know all the rest. So that is the I, we, it. That is the correct order for a leader to pay attention to uh, if they want to be effective and compassionate, I would say. Uh, key thing, values driven, making sure that you know, greed sets in or the allure of fame, you know, it's like, oh, we've got this famous speaker, or oh, I'm becoming a celebrity, you know, it's like Bleh. that, that corruption, to use an old fashioned word, or temptation, another old fashioned word, that is sets in and every day there's this like lean towards it by mistake and then the reset and then lean towards it and then reset. Like that is the process of being a leader. It's not that you're a saint um, and it's not that you don't have to reset, you do. And I think if you reset when you're just slightly leaning, it's easier than if you've been really grabbed by it, which is why having honest people around you is really very helpful too. Now as a leader, one sets the culture. 
So for me, like, you know, I, you know, I just did a video for our volunteers and it's like, right, this is our culture. And one models the culture. People copy what you do rather than what you say, really. So that the culture rather than the systems you have is often the, the key thing. Like we have a sense of humour in our culture. That's just part of the culture. So, um, you know, when people come to their first staff meeting, they're quite surprised at how many jokes there are and it can be a bit rude and there's a certain vibe going on. So, yeah, it's important to lead with the culture. And as things get to a certain size, to be aware of that, I would say. Um, so yeah, there's some of my musings on leadership, uh, staying connection to passion, to inspiration, keeping the big picture as a leader, that's really important while everyone else is getting very detail focused <laughs> to go, okay, does this really matter? What's the big picture? Keeping connected also to the kind of cold face of the people that we're serving. I feel like as a leader, if, if this way is temptation, you know, greed, fame, money, over this way is service. Okay, so that reorientation to serving and being in contact with the people that are being served. Uh, I could add gratitude, like self-gratitude and gratitude. The flow of appreciation is kind of like um, the glue that holds a team together or the energy of that team, the fuel of that team, to use another analogy. So there, there are some of the things I've learned um, as a leader in this project. It certainly made me grow. Uh, it's certainly not easy, uh, but I'm glad that I signed up for it.